What's going on, Headliner Nation? Kyle back with the Fantasy Headliners. I've got my wide receiver start and sits for week four of the NFL season. Just a side note about this video. We're still finding out details about the positive tests from the Tennessee Titans today. Sounds like it might be four players, possibly more. We heard a few names. All of them are backups, long snapper, things of that nature. So for right now, we're still going to continue moving forward with our content this week as if teams will play, whether they move the game back to Monday night, they end up playing on Sunday or whatever it may end up being. We're still going to move forward with the content as if they will be playing but make sure you stick around and check out all the updates here on the channel throughout the week so you know what to do with your teams if you have anybody from these teams all right so here we go let's go ahead and jump into it let's talk about my wide receiver rankings but first let's take a look at my accuracy from week three week three was all over the place once again unfortunately i didn't get to that or above 70 percent mark that i kind of set is a it is a goal for me every single week this week end up hitting 64 percent had a lot of really good calls one the big call basically for the week was sitting robert woods he ends up balling out potentially matchup proof at this point i don't have him as a sit this week however but last week like of the top 10 scoring wide receivers there was like five of them that weren't even on fantasy team more than 50 percent of fantasy teams and most of them weren't even being started that's just how weird week three was a lot of different guys scored had really big weeks and they were really on nobody's radar or they were widely available in a lot of different leagues. So let's bounce back this week. Let's get back up over 70%. I'm feeling it. I know we can do it. The first matchup that we got to talk about, Denver at the New York Jets for Thursday night football. And we're all super excited about this game, right? A backup, backup quarterback for the Denver Broncos. And then, of course, the New York Jets, which are basically like a backup NFL team at this point. For a wide receiver in this matchup, Jerry Judy is going to be a start for me in Denver. Had nine targets last week. I'm going to have him starting with Tim Patrick and K.J. Hamler sitting. This could end up being a very sloppy game. I'm not expecting a whole lot of this game, and I'm going to start Jerry Judy just because I'm sure they're going to have to throw the ball. And who's going to be the talent that wins out? I'll bet on Jerry Judy before I bet on the other two guys. Any one of these guys could end up scoring, but it could be all over the place this week. For wide receiver, for the Jets, I'm going to sit both of them. I'm not going to go with Burroughs. I'm not going to go with Hogan. I'm just not going to go with it. Why? Because there's no reason to. If you're starting either of these guys, then you're in a really bad situation. So the only guy that I'm rolling with in this matchup is going to be Jerry Judy. Baltimore going up against Washington. Baltimore is going to hope to bounce back after a disappointing loss on Monday Night Football to Kansas City. But quite honestly, with Baltimore, this is going to be a matchup that they don't really need to be looking over either. Yes, they can win this matchup, but it might be a little bit tougher than what they're expecting. Me personally, I'm sitting all the wide receivers from Baltimore this week. The only person that I would consider starting is Marquise Brown. However, Darby has only allowed six receptions in three games this year. And he's more than likely going to be the guy that is going to be on Marquise Brown. And Washington is only allowing 29.77 fantasy points per game to opposing wide receivers right now. That is eighth fewest in the league. So that pass, that passing defense there in Washington is no joke. OK, now. Is it great? No, by, by no means it's not. One of the things that they've benefited from is such a great defensive line. That front seven there in Washington creates a lot of pressure. So yes, Baltimore could absolutely bounce back this week and take advantage of maybe some short routes. Willie Sneed, yep, maybe end up being a guy that does something. But for me, I don't really want to risk it this week. The offense, the passing game hasn't looked great. We've had some dropped passes. I want to go ahead and hold off on this matchup. And even and even if I were going to start anyone, it would be Marquise Brown. But a majority of you probably have Marquise Brown as like your third wide receiver. So you should be able to find somebody to fill in anyway. On the other side, Terry McLaurin. We're going to go ahead and start him. He's the guy that we're not really going to sit unless the matchup is just crazy bad. 269 yards right now, six most in the NFL for Dontrell Inman and Steven Sims. We're going to go ahead and sit those guys. They're just not getting enough 
reliable volume right now. That's all there is to it. Yeah, Inman had two touchdowns last week, but are we going to put him in our lineup counting on that every single week? Probably not. Terry Terry McLaurin is the guy to own. Sims and Inman, yeah, they might bounce back and forth a little bit and have some decent games. Sims not having nearly the type of year that I thought he would have. We'll see what happens, but there's a lot of talk about Dwayne Haskins and whether or not he's going to be sat sometime in the near future, so we want to keep an eye on that as well. Pittsburgh and the Titans, one of the matchups that we're going to have to keep an eye on, could potentially be pushed back to Monday night, so we'll continue to eye that situation. For Pittsburgh right now, Juju is going to be a start for me, and Deontay Johnson, if he is healthy, okay? He's still in the concussion protocol from for as far as I know. We'll have to see how things play out during the week here. Because things are being shut down right now and guys aren't being allowed into buildings, Pittsburgh should be fine. The only thing wrong with Pittsburgh is just are they going to play? So they should be okay going through protocols and everything of that nature. So we'll continue to eye that situation. For Chase Claypool, now he's got great upside, right? And this past weekend, somebody, a certain fantasy football account, we won't name anybody, posted a tweet saying, oh, his his snap percentage climbed to so many snaps this past week. Keep an eye on him, blah, blah, blah. Of course it climbed. Deontay Johnson went out like in the second quarter with a concussion. So, yes, it went up. Duh. Here's the thing, though. He didn't really get any volume. Even though his snaps went up, he's really a guy that's a boomer bust potential. I like Claypool long term. I don't really think he's a guy that we're going to steadily rely on this season. Now, with that being said, if for some reason Johnson misses this week, we will come back and reevaluate this in the wide receiver ranking. So keep an eye on that as we find out more information throughout the week. James Washington is going to be a sit for me no matter what. On the flip side for the Titans, Corey Davis, we're going to go ahead and start him this week. And I am also going to list Humphreys as a start this week. Why are we listing Adam Humphreys as a start? Well, Pittsburgh slot corner Mike Hilton has allowed the fifth most receiving yards to wide receivers in the slot so far this year. Pittsburgh is also allowing the eighth most fantasy points per game to opposing wide receivers. So Corey Davis has a chance to have a good week and Humphreys as well. Ceiling's going to be a little bit lower on him, so he's going to be further down in my rankings, but a lot's going to depend on what happens with this matchup as well. If it does end up getting pushed back, we might have to move some things around. But again, just stick right here on the channel. Keep an eye on our rankings, updated information, and we'll let you know what we think of the situation as it evolves. For the Chargers in Tampa Bay, Los Angeles, Keenan Allen, baby. Okay, A lot of people were worried about him after week one. No need to be worried anymore. 19 (laughs) targets last week. Allen is one of the most targeted wide receivers in the NFL right now. Justin Herbert doing wonders for him in that passing game. And we're going to continue to start Keenan Allen, a guy that... Right here. A guy that uh, we really pushed this year as being a great mid round option because his ADP was falling into the fourth, fifth, even some six rounds as well. So if you were able to get a hold of him, you got a huge value. We're going to continue to start him. Mike Williams, though, I don't really see Justin Herbert pushing the ball down the field to Mike Williams and being that kind of a connection anytime soon. So for him, I'm going to go ahead and sit him for the time being. Yeah, he could have a good game here or there, but I don't think the volume is going to be consistent for him. I think the volume is going to continue to go to Eckler, Allen, and of course, Hunter Henry. On the flip side for Tampa Bay, it looks like Chris Godwin is going to miss some significant time with a hamstring injury we'll continue again to keep an eye on that dr ethan turner on his injury video this week will probably bring it up as well and talk about it for me we're going to go ahead and leave him out of the equation for right now so on the flip side mike evans is a start right when godwin and evans were on the field we saw a whole lot of should i start evans should i sit him we said to start him last week and he scored two touchdowns on two receptions for two yards so he's always got that touchdown upside, but his, his his opportunity for volume goes up with no Chris Godwin. So I don't expect that to happen every single week. I am going to list Scotty Miller as a start this week. When Chris Godwin missed in week two, Scotty Miller saw, I think it was like 89% of the snaps, and he's probably going to be rolling in and out of the slot a little bit as well. And the one thing I see for Brady and Scotty Miller this week is the LAC pass rush is a good pass rush. They have a good defense still there. Even with some of the injuries that they had, they still have a really good defense. That pass rush is going to cause Tom Brady to get to the ball, get rid of the ball a little bit quicker. That can end up going to Scotty Miller. So since there's no Chris Godwin, Scotty Miller will be a start for me as well. 
for Seattle and Miami this week, when you've got the basically MVP leader and a guy that's thrown 14 touchdown passes in his first three games as your quarterback, you start those wide receivers. Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf should be locked into your lineup every single week. Even if you own both of them for some reason, you play both of them in your lineup. That's how good this offense has been. Both of them are starts this week. David Moore, Freddie Swain, both of those guys are sits. They could hit on any given week with the amount of times that they're throwing the football right now. So don't be surprised if they have a stat line of like 325 and a touchdown or something like that, which could potentially end up making them a start. For me, I'm going to continue to list them as sits unless there were to be some type of an injury. For Miami, now this is part of the reason that the Seahawks have had to throw the football so much. Their defense just hasn't been that great. And that's going to leave a great opportunity for Devontae Parker this week, who is my manscaped must-start wide receiver for the week. Why is that? He's going to be going up against Shaquille Griffin, who has allowed 318 receiving yards this season, most in the NFL. So Parker has a great opportunity to go out there and ball out this week in a game that should be at least back and forth, if not negative game script for him the entire time. So Fitzmagic probably going to have to throw the football quite a bit. On the other side of that, I am going to head I'm going to go ahead and start Preston Williams for some touchdown upside. Seattle has allowed 73.2 fantasy points per game to opposing wide receivers. That is the most in the NFL by 24 fantasy points. It is a huge gap between them and the second place team in terms of most fantasy points allowed to opposing wide receivers. Fitz Magic is going to spread the ball around a little bit. So if Preston Williams doesn't hit, then Grant or Ford is going to hit. Ford would be next in line. I'm going to go with Preston Williams as the number two option to hit. I think two guys are going to hit in this lineup, Parker being one of them for sure, and then one of these other guys as well. So right now it's Preston Williams for me. If that changes for any reason, though, I'll make sure that I update that in the wide receiver rankings video. But for now, I'm going to start at least two guys in this lineup because Seattle is having a tough time stopping people, and they're putting up so many points, other teams are having to throw the ball a lot. Minnesota and Houston, another game that could potentially be pushed back that we have to keep an eye on this week. Minnesota and Houston for Minnesota. Adam Thielen is going to be a start, and Jefferson is going to be a start as well for me. Now, he wasn't a start last week. He was one of my misses. But he definitely really evolved into that type of player that you want to have in your lineup. So this week, if you've got a flex spot open or a wide receiver three spot open, I'm okay with putting Jefferson there. Now, am I going to start him over any of my studs? No, absolutely not. I'm not going to do that. But I've got no problem with it because the Minnesota defense just hasn't been that great. The concern is... Kirk Cousins. What Kirk Cousins are we going to get, right? What's the offense going to look like? This is an offense that can look like a Super Bowl offense one game and then look like a bottom three offense the next game. So this is a really roller coaster type offense. For me, they're going to have to throw a lot. Thielen and Jefferson are both going to be starts for me. For the Houston Texans, Minnesota allows over 46 fantasy points per game fourth most to opposing wide receivers right now. So I'm going to go with Will Fuller this week. If Will Fuller is healthy, you play Will Fuller. Last week, we weren't 100% sure he was even going to be that healthy, and he looked fine, finished the game. Will Fuller, as long as something doesn't pop up in the injury report this week, he'll be back in my lineup for week four. For Randall Cobb, looking like maybe he's coming into his own a little bit. Last year, Houston targeted whoever was in the slot quite a bit now deandre hopkins moved in and out of the slot quite a bit but a lot of targets went to the slot receiver last year so for randall cobb 4-4 95 and 1 last week maybe coming into his own a little bit more going up against a defense that allows a lot of passing or excuse me wide receiver points i'm going to bet on randall cobb to be a little bit more safer than brandon cooks Brandon Cooks and Will Fuller to me are just a little bit too similar in nature and what they bring to the table. So if one guy is going to eat, I don't think both of them are going to eat at the same time. So I'm going to continue to pick Will Fuller just because he's getting a ton of that volume from Deshaun Watson. And then I'll go Randall Cobb sitting Cooks and sitting Stills. But again, keeping an eye on this matchup, seeing what happens if it does go off on Sunday with no hitches or they end up having to push it back.
New Orleans and Detroit. New Orleans hasn't been playing their best ball recently. They haven't looked that good outside of Alvin Kamara, who always looks good. They're going to get Detroit this week, who barely scraped out a win on the road in Arizona. So what Detroit offense is going to show up? Will Mike Thomas be able to show up? There was talk that maybe he could end up being ready last week to play that didn't end up happening. For me, if Michael Thomas is healthy, I'm going to go ahead and play Michael Thomas. So I'm going to list him as a start right now if he plays. Obviously, if he's out, we'll go ahead and change that. If Michael Thomas is out, then I'm going to play Sanders and Smith both as starts going up against Detroit, who very likely could end up giving up a ton of points. Okay, Detroit's defense looked a little bit better last week against Kyler Murray and the Arizona Cardinals, but they tend to give up too many big plays. So I would be willing to start both of these guys next week against Detroit if Michael Thomas is out. If Michael Thomas plays, though, I just have a feeling he's going to get far too much volume for us to play Smith and Sanders. So I'm going to list them both as sits, wait to hear more on Michael Thomas, and then make a decision later on in the week. So it will be very, very imperative that you keep an eye on the channel and see what we have to say about it later on. Again, if MT is out, both of these guys will likely end up being sits for me. If MT is in, excuse me, if MT is out, these guys will be start. If MT is in, then they'll be sits for me. For Detroit, big... Big play. Big play Galladay. The man. The myth. The legend. Backed last week. He looks healthy. He looked just fine last week, so he's going to be a start moving forward. Marvin Jones just hasn't really looked like that big play guy that we were hoping to get. Because if it isn't going to Galladay, there's been some going to Amendola, who's a sit for me as well. TJ Hawkinson. They're just spreading the ball around an awful lot right now. Not nearly enough volume is going to Marvin Jones. Maybe he ends up breaking out soon. I would hope so. New Orleans is pretty tough against wide receivers that are outside the wide receiver one. Really, whoever that main target is in the game, they end up having pretty good games. It's the other guys around them that pretty much struggle against New Orleans. So I'm going to go ahead and sit the other wide receivers, but Kenny Galladay will be a start for me this week. For Cleveland and Dallas, I'm going to start both of our main wide receivers there. Landry and OBJ both starts for me this week. Dallas is allowing the second most fantasy points per game to opposing wide receivers. So Baker Mayfield definitely in a position to have a pretty decent game. His wide receivers in a position to have a pretty decent game as well. For Dallas, Cooper's going to be a start for me. He's second in the league in targets right now, continuing to get a lot of volume. He's not maybe as sexy as what Lamb and Gallup are, but he's been consistent. Wait, what did I just say about Amari Cooper? That's right. He's been consistent so far this year. We'll see if that consistency keeps up into week four, but he's a start for me. CD, here's the thing about about this team. This is going to be a tough call every single week. Unless Cooper's facing a really, really tough uh, cornerback one, a guy that's shutting everybody down, likely not going to sit him. If I were, then I would be able to start Lamb and Gallup. But if you're starting Cooper, it's really hard to start Lamb and Gallup because Zeke is seeing a lot of targets and Schultz is still seeing a decent amount of targets as well. So you're going to have to pick and choose. Who's going to end up having the game? For me right now, C.D. Lamb still seems a little bit more consistent in terms of volume and what he can do out of the slot. Michael Gallup, to me, seems a little bit riskier. He's coming off a huge week. It's probably going to lead a lot of you to play him. For me, though, I'm going to sit him this week. Because, again, is he going to get enough volume this week? Or is it going to go back to Lamb and some of the other guys? Also, is Cleveland Dallas really going to be that big of a shootout? I don't know. We'll end up seeing with that. For me right now, Gallup's going to be a sit. Cooper and Lamb will be starts. Jacksonville and Cincinnati. And Jacksonville, well... They were dealing with a little bit of an injury bug last week, and, uh, well, they just uh, they burnt a lot of people, right? Keelan Cole, we thought, would, would be in line for a, a good game. LaVisca Chenault, we thought, was going to be in for a good game. Gardner Minshew was started in a lot of lineups, and, boy, they blew it against Miami. Well, Cincinnati has been pretty sneaky this year in terms of fantasy points allowed to wide receivers because they have allowed the fourth fewest to wide receivers. So, for me, DJ Chark this week, if he's healthy and back in, he will be a start. The other guys, though, I'm not going to be fooled into starting them against Cincinnati, a team that has done pretty well against stopping wide receivers so far and limiting their fantasy points. For Cincinnati, for their wide receivers, I'm going to start A.J. Green and Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd, for me, is kind of going to be a perma start. Him and uh, him and Joe Burrow have a connection right now. He's kind of that wide receiver one. A.J. Green's still seeing a decent amount of volume. He's just not turning it into reception. So hopefully, at some point, 
he reverses that. Higgins had a great week last week. But keep in mind, it was really two red zone catches that made the week. Is that what's going to be happening moving forward? I got to see it a little bit more before I start throwing throwing Higgins into my lineup on a weekly basis. So he will end up being a sit for me. But in the next week or two, we can end up saying, you know what? A.J. Green, he's going to move to a sit, and T. Higgins will move to a start. But in a game against Jacksonville where... We'll see what Cincinnati does. Maybe this is the game where Joe Mixon has a decent performance. Yeah, I'm not going to get my hopes up. But you would think against Jacksonville, Cincinnati could run the ball a little bit more and, and try to keep Joe Burrow from getting knocked around so much. Indianapolis and Chicago and Nick Foles taking over for Chicago is a good thing. It's what we've been hoping for. Yeah, Mitchell Trubisky didn't look too bad to start the season, but going up against an Atlanta offense last week that they really shouldn't have had to come back against, yeah, he looked like crap. Back to the old Mitchell Trubisky, ladies and gentlemen. That was the one consistent thing we got from week three, is Mitchell Trubisky looked like his, his old self. For Indianapolis, we're going to start T.Y. Hilton. Why? Because who in the heck do they have to play with? Right, I mean, everybody's injured. Everybody is injured. Campbell's injured. Pittman's injured now. Jack Doyle was injured. So for me, Hilton, he's going to be a start. Who else? Because are you going to start any of the other three guys listed on your screen there? No. If you are, listen, you either got to hit the waiver wire or we're, we're just done with this year. If you've got to rely on any of these other guys, we've got more problems than starting T.Y. Hilton. T.Y. Hilton's going to be the main benefactor going up against Chicago. I'll list him as a start because more likely Indy's going to have to throw it a little bit in this game. They're not going to be able to just stuff the ball down Chicago's throat with the run game. Robinson, oh, back to a perma start for me, baby. He was my wide receiver two last week, and guess what? Boom, on the dot, the wide receiver two for last week and half PPR. So a good week from Robinson. Foles came in and really helped save the day. Miller, Mooney, and Ginn are all going to be sits for me this week. Because with Foles, I got to see who really that number two option is. The split between Miller and Mooney is really odd right now. Miller was a start for me last week. Ended up coming back and hitting that mark with that late touchdown. He dropped another touchdown. But the problem with Miller is if this team isn't in three wide receiver sets, he's not on the field. Mooney's on the outside. Miller only plays in the slot. If Miller's in the slot and they're playing three wide, that's great. But if they're leading, they're not running a whole lot of three wides. Okay, They're bringing out their tight ends, and they're putting, uh, they're putting a fullback in the backfield at times. They're running the football. So, you know... I just I can't get on board with either of them right now until I see one or the other being Nick Foles main target with Miller. I don't know what it is. He's constantly in Matt Nagy's doghouse. He dropped that touchdown last week, which probably isn't going to help him. And unless they're running three wide receiver sets, he's not even on the field. So going forward, Anthony Miller, probably not a guy that I'm going to rely on too much. And honestly, a guy that you could probably drop right now if you wanted to, if there's someone else on your waiver wire that presents more upside. Arizona and Carolina, and obviously DeAndre Hopkins is a start. Andy Isabella might be a surprise sit for some of you. The only reason is, is Andy Isabella truly here to stay? Now, I like Andy Isabella. Jake and I last year were like, this is really a guy in this offense. He can do a whole lot of damage. Hasn't really done anything up until last week. But if you look at his career numbers, highly efficient. (laughs) Whenever he catches the football, they go for pretty big plays. So I want to see it against Carolina again. If I see it against Carolina again, I'll be on Andy Isabella moving forward as a weekly start. For right now, though, unless you are looking for like a really high upside play, and again, some of this might change over the course of the week. If we find out games are postponed or guys aren't going to play or whatever, Isabella could move to a start for me because at that point, it's like, who else can we put in, right? And if he presents some upside going up against Carolina, That's great, but maybe they run the football a little bit more against Carolina as well. On the flip side, DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, and Curtis Samuel are all sits for me this week. DJ Moore can end up biting me in the butt. Robbie Anderson didn't do a whole lot last week. I had Robbie Anderson as a sit. Arizona allows the fewest fantasy points per game to opposing wide receivers right now. The defense is no joke, ladies and gentlemen. It is a lot better than it was last year by miles so for me going up against Arizona Carolina doesn't offer me a whole lot of upside this week now let me say something about DJ Moore DJ Moore is a sit because I don't see a whole lot of upside with him 
if you have some guys that are pretty close to DJ Moore that you could start over him, I'm okay with that. If DJ Moore is your true and tried wide receiver one and you don't have anybody else, then you start DJ Moore and you just say, Ugh. upside's pretty probably pretty low this week. I like DJ Moore. I have nothing against DJ Moore. But DJ Moore was also a guy that I told you all to be really careful about this offseason. And so far, he hasn't done a ton. So we'll see what happens this week. But going up against a defense that's limited wide receiver so far this year, I just don't have my hope ups, hopes up for him in week four. Boy, were the Giants awfully disappointing last weekend. And this weekend, going up against the Rams, I just don't expect it to get a whole lot better. Especially for Slayton, who's going to have to go up against Jalen Ramsey. Slayton, for me, is a sit this week. However, I will go with Golden Tate as a start. Why is that? Because their slot corner, Hilton, has allowed the fourth most receiving yards to wide receivers in the slot so far. Golden, Golden Tate could be a guy that, that could have a pretty decent game this week. The Rams are probably going to put quite a few points up on the Giants. I mean, let's face it. The 49ers did last week, and the 49ers are starting people from the Little Giants at this point. So it, I'm fine with running with it. You know, the Rams are probably going to have to put up some points on the Giants. It's going to happen. They're going to have to throw the ball. Golden Tate's going to be the main beneficiary there. For Damian Ratley, he's going to be a sit for me. Why? Well, why would you start him? That would be the better question here. For the Los Angeles Rams, Woods is a start. Okay, not listing him as a set ever again. Cup is going to be a start as well. Both of those guys looking really good. And Van Jefferson is going to be a sit for me. The sneaky play here this week is going to be Golden Tate. Keep an eye on that because that is a matchup in the slot. He could win consistently this week. Buffalo and Las Vegas. And for the Bills, Stefan Diggs is definitely going to be a start for me. <laughs> I mean, heck, last week he had two touchdowns called back. So he would have had a huge week last week if it hadn't been for that. So for Diggs, yeah, he's going to continue to be a start for me. Him and Josh Allen have formed a great connection so far this season. John Brown dealing with a little bit of a hamstring issue. Is he going to be ready to go this week? If he's not, definitely going to be a sit here and probably going to be a sit for me anyway in case, even if he does play, still hampered a little bit. Cole Beasley will be a start for me, though. Led the team in targets last week out of the slot. Josh Allen looked his way quite a bit with John Brown being limited. So I'll go with him to be a little bit more consistent over Gabriel Davis, who had a big big week last week. But I'm not expecting that same type of big week going forward for Las Vegas. Rugs. What's going on with Rugs? He's going to be a sit for me. What's going on with Edwards? He's going to be a sit for me. What's going on with Renfro? He's going to be a sit for me. Why is that? Because Buffalo's pretty darn good. And if you saw last week, Las Vegas, they kind of got bottled up a little bit. Are they going to get bottled up again this week? We'll wait and see. I do think they could end up using the run game a little bit more with Josh Jacobs. Darren Waller will still be a guy that we're going to start. But for their wide receivers right now, there's just far too much inconsistency. Renfro, if you're looking for a PPR flex play, I wouldn't hate it. But you would have to be in a really tough situation to make that call. New England headed to Kansas City this week, and what may have been a, a big-time primetime game last year doesn't have the same feel to it this year. Cam Newton, you know, keeping that offense fun, but it's just not the same Patriots team we've seen in the past. Are they going to be able to really go into KC and keep up with them? I don't know about that. Four wide receivers, I mean, like I said, when you go into KC, you're going to have to throw to keep up with them. So I expect Julian Edelman to see a good amount of targets this week. Is he going to turn those targets into receptions and yards? You know, that's up to him and Cam Newton. However, we know the volume will likely be there for him. So he's going to be a start. Harry and Bird are both going to be sits for me. On the flip side, for the Kansas City Chiefs, Tyreek Hill is going to be a start every single week. It's what happens after that. And here's the thing. Watkins, Robinson, or Hardman is, are going to hit. One of these three are going to end up hitting. Right now, though, I don't have the decision for you on who that is. So they're all sits right now. We'll talk about this more as the week goes on. Watkins, Robinson, or Hardman. Someone's going to hit. Someone's going to end up being a start. It's going to be so tough to try and figure out who that is on a weekly basis, though. Okay? Right now, my money is going to be on Hardman. Okay? I think he's going to get, they're going to keep getting him more involved and more involved. So my money would be on Hardman right now to hit this week. I just can't go in on it right now. So again, that's why they're all sits for me this early in the week. We'll talk about it later in the week, and we'll make a decision on if you need another wide receiver, who is the number two guy to own in Kansas City? Man, there's nobody left in Philadelphia. <laughs> there, 
They're all checking out right now, ladies and gentlemen. Greg Ward will be a start for me because Carson Wentz is going to have to throw the ball to somebody, right? I mean, hopefully it's Hakeem Butler who they just signed to play tight end for him. That would be awesome. I, I love I love Hakeem Butler. He hasn't worked out so far, but we'll see what happens. Ward will be a start for me. Hightower is going to be a sit. d I mean, he's he's injured right now, dealing with a hamstring injury. Will he end up being being able to play this week? We don't know, but geez, Louise, I, Philadelphia and San Francisco, they're the perfect teams to match up this week because they're both dealing with so many injuries. For wide receivers, I'm going to go ahead and run with uh, Ayuk and Bourne this week for San Francisco. Bourne, I see, with some touchdown upside. Ayuk, they used him in such a Debo-like fashion last week on the ground a little bit. And through the air, I could see him. Hey, all he's got to do is take the ball into the end zone one time, and he's pretty close to being start, uh, being a start and should get more than enough volume to hit that with a touchdown. So he will end up being a start for me. Philly has allowed the 10th most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers, so both guys could end up being a hit this week. Trent Taylor will be a sit for me, though. Really excited to see Ayuk this week. I think they could really use him in a lot of different formats and really get him the ball enough that, again, he could have an awesome week. So he's going to be a start for me. Atlanta and Green Bay. Julio Jones is going to get an extra day this week to get himself healthy. So I'm going to keep an eye on it. Right now, he's a start for me. Him and Ridley will both be starts. Gage is going to have an extra day to get out of the concussion protocol. For right now, though, he is a sit for me. If he Now, if he's healthy and Julio ends up being out again, Gage will be a start for me again. But all three of them on the field, you know, unless the matchup is really, really, really good, it's just not one where I'm willing to start all three of them. So if Julio and Ridley are in, I'll start those two, but I will sit Gage. And again, we'll come back to that later in the week when we find out more about Julio. For Green Bay, Adams is going to be a start, and Lazard is going to be a start. Lazard had a huge game last week with no Adams. Adams gets an extra day of rest as well to get himself back in the lineup. He, was, he ended up being pretty close. I think they were really hoping that they would get him back into the game. Didn't end up happening, but with it being a Monday night matchup, he gets some extra time there, which will be really good for him. He'll get an extra day of rest and get back in the lineup. Lazard, again, great number two option right now for Aaron Rodgers. MVS, a little boomer bust for me. If it's a really good matchup, and this is a pretty good matchup, then yeah, he's got a little bit of upside. But you know, his weekly line could be something like, Four, three, fifty-two, and a touchdown, and that makes him. A, that basically is going to make him a start, right? So he's going to be teetering on the edge of being a start or not. For me, I'm just not willing to willing to worth it with how good Lazard has been over the last few games and dating back to last season. Really being a target for Aaron Rodgers. So MVS again. If Adams is out for some reason, then I'll move back to MVS. But for right now, he's going to be a sit. There you have it, Headliner Nation. Another wide receiver start and sit video down. Do me a favor, if you appreciate the content, hit that like button. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. We'll get to as many as we can. And if you're new to Headliner Nation, hit that subscribe button. Become a part of Headliner Nation today, over 103,000 strong. Headliner Nation, love you all. Stay safe, stay healthy. I'll catch you on the next episode of the Fantasy Headliners.